Welcome to Omega Plumbing Services. I'm going backwards in my van right now down my driveway. Ah, looking at my camera. It's actually going to be sunny today. That's weird. In Morro Bay. Strange. Okay, I am headed to a friend's house. I don't know, these are all clients, but I consider my friends. It's, you know, woman's jogging. Can't see her. Okay. Anyway, so going to a friend's house in Cayucas Beach House. Actually, I work on both. They're their two brothers, Patrick and Mike, and uh, they uh, both own a beach house. Each each own a beach house in Cayucas, and they let them. Uh, let their grandkids use the beach house. So anyway, I guess there's something to do there, so I am going to go and check it out. I don't even know what's going on. There's got to be, I forget if there's something wrong or... Anyway, looks like it's going to be a nice day. It's Friday, which doesn't really mean anything when you order. When you order. <laughs> it doesn't really mean anything when you have your own business because it's like you're always kind of planning every day and thinking about work. So, you better like your work if you're going to do it all the time. But some people are like, oh, I can't take it, I gotta go, I gotta get away. Which is my place of zen for me when I want to get away is Moab, Utah. And I used to go there before it was popular. Well, I guess everybody at one point knew Moab before somebody else. But I went there, first time I went to Moab was in. 1988, I think, or 1989, and nobody, there's not a lot, oh man, it was so cool back then in the 80s, Moab, oh, in early 90s, because it was still small, nobody knew about it, you had, um, you had all these little original restaurants, there was a place, it was called Eddie McStiff's, I don't, I think the, the Eddie McStiff's is still there, the thing, but everything's changed, you know, it's like, it was so cool. It was in the middle of the desert, and you go to Ed McStiff's. Had it, had, it was like when when breweries were a thing, like when they were first coming online. Everybody was doing making their own beer, and uh, the guy would walk around. I remember um, the, the guy would walk around. Uh, a magician would walk around, do some couple of cards and stuff at Ed McStiff's. So I think it was pretty cool. And then. Uh, Oh, there's a pizza plate that's still there, Zach's, but that, I don't know, I don't know how old Zach's is. I, it could be older, but I don't know. I, I, I know, I just remember Eddie McStiff's when I first went there in the, uh, the 80s. And, uh, yeah, Moab. I still, it's still cool around there. I still really like it. Of course, I'm going on a tangent here. It's not, it has nothing to do with plumbing, but Moab is the place that, place to go. I, I like it. It can get super busy and crazy, but um, I love it when it's like really dry and uh, like 100 degrees. That's the, that's the best time to walk around. What the heck? I keep hitting something with my van. Okay, so here's the uh, view I have going to Cayucas. Up the road we go. They just finished this bridge. It took them a long time because it rained profusely. Talking about rain, speaking of rain, we are going to have a hurricane. If you can believe that one. The hurricane is going up and it's going to hit like the Baja and then it's going to come into Southern California and then it's going to continue north. That's what the the models, the computer models are saying, and lo and behold, it's going to fill up those reservoirs. Amazing. Lake Mead and Lake Powell and all those areas. Lake Powell, that was really cool. I remember going there in the 80s too. It was so strange, so different. And I remember being a kid and I wanted to walk to a mountain and I'm on the near Bullfrog and uh, resort or bullfrog marina and we wanted to get to a, a mountain 
and we're like, hey, let's walk to that mountain. And we just were walking and walking and walking. And we're originally from the Northeast, you know, I grew up in Connecticut. And uh, we're like, that mountain must be far away because it's not getting any closer. <laughs> but it was just a different, yeah, and there's all this different desert dwelling animals and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. This is the other area that they're working on. They put another bridge in over there, but they haven't opened that one up quite yet. I don't know why. It should be fairly soon, though. Here we are, Cayucas. A little paradise here on the central coast of California. It has gotten extremely expensive, the houses. highly unlikely that I or anyone I well nobody that works for a living is going to own a house in Cayucas at this point unless the economy took it tooks it tooks unless the unless the economy takes a terrible dumper and if that's the case then you're not buying houses so it's a catch-22. The only people that are going to have money is money. Money people. People that have money are going to have money. I can't remember where their house is, to tell you the truth. I know it's at the beach, though. It's a beach house. When they meet, when I say beach house, they are at the beach. This guy can't wait. He had to go around me. It's like, what the heck? Can't wait two seconds. I'm just taking a look. There's the ocean. This looks a little bit like Cambria too. If you go to the Cambria, if you go up to Cambria, that's can I say Cambria one more time? Cambria, Cambria, Cambria. Anyway, I like you because better than Cambria. Cambria has a weird vibe. I just don't know what it is. I just don't appreciate it. And uh, oh my God, I'm actually here. There's a bird making a noise. Oh, I hear some construction workers because they're speaking Spanish. There must be construction workers. Oh, oh there you go. Yeah, that's so we took that apart. Nothing in there. Took that apart. Nothing in there. He wanted me to take this apart, and we did. And there you go. Look at all that crap in there. That's crazy. Well, that was it. All he had me do was a shower. He wanted something done with it. It was, it was like super easy. And he's a, like I said, he's a client, but he's more of a friend client. So I get there. He's like, hey, how you doing? How you doing? I'm like, good. He's like, here. He hands me a $100 bill right off the bat. He goes, I just want to be ahead of you. I'm like, okay. And then at the end, he's like, is that enough? And normally I do charge like, you know, 150, 200 bucks for a visit. But again, you have to take that in consideration. So some people are like, oh no, you've got to charge this much. And I'm like, yeah, if you're running, a, if I'm running a guy out there, if you're running a guy and you got to pay that dude, then you've got to charge a certain amount of money. It is what it is. The advantage to running your own business and knowing what your bills are, knowing what you need to make for the day, knowing what's coming in is, and this is what's nice when customers can deal with family-run companies or owner-ran businesses, is we can, we can negotiate. There's a negotiation. So, and I also stand behind my work. So basically, if you negotiate, uh, and you take into consideration your client, how much they've given you before. Some people are like, you know, cut through. Oh, no, it's always this much money, whatever it is. But I don't feel that way. This man has treated me always really nice. And when things were hot and heavy and he was selling and buying houses and stuff like that, he had no problem paying uh, thousands of dollars to do his house over and stuff like that. So... One day when he does another house or whatever, and even if he doesn't, it doesn't matter. He's a good guy. He gives he gives me money, and it's a fair thing. You know, you gotta take into consideration what's fair. I was there for like maybe 30 minutes, not even 
fix that for him. He gave me hundred dollars. So you got to take that in consideration. Some guys need to make you know two, three, four, five hundred bucks a day, and so do I. I mean, if you figure out what your overhead is, and everybody's like, oh, point zero two, and this, that, and the other, it's like all you got to do is take in consideration all your what you what what it takes you to live. So if you don't have a shop and you're living in a house, well, that's your overhead. What's your overhead? What do you pay a month? You know, for overhead, uh, fuel, liability, yeah, everything that it makes. So I figured it out one day, and basically, in my opinion, fifty bucks an hour. Got to make fifty bucks an hour. You got to start there. That's the starting point to survive. Then above that, you've got to make money. But that's based on a certain hours per hour and all that stuff, uh, money per hour. But whatever it costs, your fuel, your truck, tools, liability, workman's comp, everyday living, that's really your overhead. Now, if you have a, a shop and it's a corporation or a business, well, the overhead is basically the shop, the people, you know, stuff. And your overhead's huge. You have to be making so anyway, like I said, being a, a young, young, I wish I was young, being a small company, and uh, I've been doing this for 29 years. I've been on my own since 2001, but I moved several times, and that's the thing. Don't move. If you want to move somewhere, you know, settle in young and make your money. Uh, you could move and, and, and do a secondary kind of uh, growth period. And I was in Massachusetts once. It was in Western Mass. It was in Western Massachusetts. And this guy came in from out of town. And my friends didn't like this company because he was an older dude. He was in his 60s. And at the time, we were younger. So everybody was like, we don't like that guy. He, you know, he, he came in. He's an old dude. and he's you know. But they were, he was taking work away from everybody. And the reason he was is because he knew what he was doing. So he came in, saw a need, you know, hired, he was hiring local. So it wasn't like he was, you know, he, they were just bad. They were, they were taking money away from them, but he beat them at their own game. And that's what usually happens. So you just got to work your way in and it's all comes down to personality really too. Like some people you can give, you can give the same bid to someone else and if you don't jive with that, like I went to that job the other day, that woman, I didn't really get a good feeling from that woman. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to make the bid a little higher because I have a feeling that there may be an issue. That's how I look at things. Am I wrong? I don't know, but I take that consideration. That's one thing. Then the second thing is underneath the, the crawl space. I, underneath the crawl space was uh, was a, was miserable, so I could take that in consideration too. I bet you that job. Nobody tells prices and all this stuff, but I don't, I don't really care. Uh, I think that job's probably around six grand. You know, two four six. You know, fixture price, bathtub, lavatory, toilet, and, and, uh, overall. But what you should really do is when you bid, you should just do. You, you're basically doing time and material because that's what that's costing you is time and material. <laughs> no, no matter how you how you split it, it's always time and material. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for joining Omega Plumbing Services. I will see you on the next video. Like and subscribe, please. Comment below. Uh, again, liking does get me into an algorithm, so I would appreciate that. And if you want to uh, give me some comments and tell me what you think I should be doing, let me know. All right, bye.